Hi my lovely painters. So I've been asked to do a 10 minute tip about the process I go through when I'm planning a composition or a project for you. So um, although most of you finding it fairly easy to follow along when I've done the planning, um, some people want to know what thought process do I go through in order to make that break it down into a step by step process so that you can follow along. Well, of course, that varies enormously depending on the medium for the first thing and the type of composition. But I've come up with a sort of a almost like a flowchart checklist that you can follow along with and make sure that you've uh, got all the points in there. So let's just work through that for watercolours and see what will happen. I've got a couple of examples here as well to refer to as we go along. Um, so first of all, you want to have a theme in mind. So you've probably been thinking about a painting that you'd like to do that I'm not going to tell you how to do, but you're going to work out how to do it. So it might be something like a pet portrait or your favourite items from your desk as a still life or something in your kitchen or your favourite view out of the window, somewhere you went on holiday. So these things can vary enormously from a still life that's just a few things right in front of you to uh, a panoramic view of a landscape. And in order to sort of give us some general pointers to follow, um, we're going to start off with deciding on your theme. And this is either going to be from a reference pic or a set of reference pictures that you've pulled together and, or it could be um, a still life set up that you're actually looking at the thing in front of you or the view in front of you. So whether whichever one of those it is, you're still going to need to follow all of the next steps, uh, just that the, what you actually do will be slightly different. So if you have decided uh, on, your com on your theme, then the first thing to do is to plan the composition for that. And the first thing we're going to go to on that uh, is doing thumbnails. Thumbnail sketches is something we've covered several times in our different uh, projects over the three years we've been running. So um, if you are new coming into the course or you uh, you don't remember much about thumbnails, one of the things you can do is go into our Patreon site and use a search little uh, microscope symbol and type in thumbnail sketch or thumbnail. And all the projects that have that tagged, so that will probably be the 10 minute tips where I've talked about using thumbnails in the past, uh, those will all come up for you. So that's a great way to reference anything that I come up with today that you can't quite remember how we did it. Because I'm not going to go into everything in full full detail. Um, so first off, you'll do some thumbnail sketches. So these are going to be your little two to three inch sized uh, images of what you think your composition is going to be. Here are some thumbnail sketches that I did for our banana cottage uh, examples. Try different formats. So here's a square, square format, a vertical rectangle. I could have also tried a horizontal rectangle. I could try two different views of the same format. Um, but basically what you want to do is just stick to the bones of the subject with the large shapes going in first and um, then you also want to think about where the lights and darks are going to fall to, so you can tell if the composition is pleasing in terms of lights and darks and a focal point. So um, in order to, when you've chosen your sort of format of size to uh, height to width ratio and the main setting for the composition, whether it's going to be centered or to one side and so on, then you can go ahead and develop the thumbnail just a little bit more so that you can see where the lights and darks fall. Uh, we don't want to spend more than about five to 10 minutes on thumbnail sketches and make those decisions fairly quickly. Okay, so the next thing that we'll be moving on to then, you've thought about the theme, you've thought about the composition by using thumbnail sketches. The next thing, the third thing is your color scheme. So a lot of different moods can be created by the choice of colour scheme. Uh, is it going to be light-hearted and flowery, light, pastel colours? Is it going to be dark and moody? 
Uh, is it going to have a lot of uh, sort of heavy energy in it? So you can tell that, um, for instance, these are both light-hearted, but they have completely different type of colour schemes in them. So which kind of family of colours are you looking to include? It also maybe can contingent upon which colours you have or whether you need to go and get some more. But um, the thing to do at this point is to play with the colours you think you're going to want. So what I mean by playing with the colours is you can do something as complicated and organised as this, where you're going creating a chart using to decide like which blues are going to be the basis for my my uh, composition and how do the other colours I want to put in there react with that blue and everything's labelled. Or it can be something as simple as just dashing down the colours you intend to use and see how they go and blend together in the corner of a page. Try to keep notes in pencil as to which uh, hues and pigments you've actually used, including the brand names, because they do vary from one to another. Um, so that's playing with your colours. So we've gone one, the theme, two, composition, uh, three, the colour scheme. Number four, sounds simple, but it's probably the most complex of all, is the order of work. So um, this constitutes a lot of subcategories. Sub and that's going to be the way you want to spend the bulk of this planning process. I'm estimating that I'd probably spend about two hours planning a good painting. Um, could be a lot more than that if it's a large and complicated one. Uh, it could be less than that if it's fairly simple or I've done the kind of, kind of painting before. So if this is your first uh, time that you're actually planning a composition from start to finish, you want to pay a lot of attention to the order of work. So the kinds of things we need to think about are, are there any lights and whites in there that need saving or painting around? In this example, you can see we've got quite a lot of light and the, in watercolour especially, um, a lot of the success of a painting would depend on whether you've saved any whites or left them alone so that they sing out and become the little sparkles in the composition. Here's another one where um, the whites are fairly key to the composition working. Um, and these were painted round rather than saved. In this one, I did save them a lot of these, and you can do it, as you know, with masking fluid or with a resist. These are done mostly with a resist, sort of white or wax crayon and pastels. Um, some areas were just avoided, like this is not painted at all. Um, and so it's a mixture of all the different methods that you could use. And that's key. So one of the things you'll be thinking about is to do that first. You need to plan. If you're leaving the whites alone, you need to plan where they're going to be so that you don't make any errors and paint over them by accident. Uh, the second thing to think about is the background. Now, if you're doing a landscape, this is usually fairly easy to determine because if the sky is your background, it's likely to be fairly light. And as you go sort of working from far away, to close at hand, it may dictate easily that you do the, the background first and work steadily towards you, towards the foreground. In other compositions, it might not be that obvious. Um, for instance, the background of this is really over here where nothing much is going on. Or you could say that it's over here with some of these sort of suggested leaf areas. So um, if you have an area where the background is much darker than the subject matter, that's another situation where you may not want to do the background first because you don't want to put dark colours on and risk them running into your subject matter. So with the proviso that we nearly always work from light to dark in watercolour, you then want to combine that thinking with how am I going to do my background? Do I want to do my background first if it's a light background? Do I want to do my background last? Is it um, a portrait of a flower that could possibly work by itself and then you decide if you want to put a background in afterwards? Or do I need a background at all? Some images these days especially have a nice sort of clean modern look. If you're able to keep the background pristine white you maybe don't need to put the background in at all. So um, that's your, in your order of work, you're going to think about the white saving or leaving whites first. Second, when is the background going to happen and is it going to happen? 
Third, washes and layers. So this is the main bulk of what you're going to be doing. Uh, you need to build up the image with washes and layers. And generally you want to start with nice thin, light washes and build towards thicker, heavier washes with more colour in to um, complete the smaller areas. So when I'm talking about the big soft washes, I would have done a wash of this general light colour for the lawn here and a wash of the blues, maybe not too much blue through here, but there would have been touches of it. Um, this green wash would have gone all the way up under here because this is all basically green area. So what I'm looking for is an underlying unifying uh, common denominator, if you like, if you like a maths analogy. <laughs> uh, what's the common denominator here? There's a light green that pulls it together uh, in a lot of the areas. Obviously, you're not going to wash it over everything because some of those things we don't want green under the pinks. That wouldn't be nice. Um, but uh, in the general background areas, you can usually find a colour that will pull it together as a base colour that you can then add to, to add features or texture. So, um, washes. You work from lights to darks. Sometimes you will want to work wet into wet. While the previous layer is still damp or wet, you can throw other colours in there to get runny effects or soft edges. If you don't want that, you must wait till they're dry and then you do crisp edged uh, subsequent washes, which will probably partially cover the initial washes. And that's how, we're going, that's how we would build up all these different layers here with the pinks and the, the lighter colours. And then finally, you want to look at creating intensity in your picture. This wouldn't work if it didn't have some darks in there somewhere. So we're looking for the shadow areas, the crevices and the verticals. Now, very often, if you're doing a landscape, this becomes very obvious because tree trunks and um, arches in buildings, those kind of things always have the darkest shadows. Um, but it helps to have something that you can give uh, a nice, good dark section to. And a lot of watercolour paintings fail because they just don't get completed with that darkness that's needed to make the light sing out. So it's all about the contrast in the end. And that pretty much covers everything that you're going to need to know. There are some other things to consider, like if you're going to add mixed media elements into it, when are you going to do that? Will they go on at the end or do they need to come in part way through? Or are they part of the base before you even start to think about saving whites? Um, other things to consider, we've touched on slightly, is texture techniques, things like um, dried brush, uh, spatter, and uh, maybe adding in things like granulating medium or um, other elements like um, using a wax crayon or pastel to give an ex added texture to the surface of the watercolour. Those you'll have to think about when they come in and when they're needed. They're probably going to be interspersed between your layers uh, and, and your final intense darks. So I hope this has been useful for you. Uh, if you've uh, been following along our club for the last three years, you'll know that we've got in a lovely back catalogue of projects that incorporate all of these things in one way and another. If you are new and just discovering us, uh, as I mentioned before, if you've joined the club, you'll have access to the back catalogue and you can find any of the reference points I've talked about. If you want to find out more information about how to do each of those techniques, you can just put them into the search and all the projects involving those things will pop up for you, including 10 minute tips. Okay, so thanks for watching Immersed in Water Media and this 10 minute tip on planning your own composition. Bye for now.